Hi everyone, this is Fly Fisher. Today I present to you my uh, my diagram and my analysis of how this Tesla self-starting alternating motor actually works. I went through tons of news articles and trying to understand how these two motors work and by looking at a lot of his figures and his diagrams on exactly how uh, these motors work and can work uh, perpetually. Um, it was painstaking to kind of get my arms around it because there was no color added to it. And then once I added color, it was begun. It really became. Uh, I was really able to make sense of all this. So, uh, you know, if you really want to see the end result, please just go to the end of the video. If you want to hear more discussion, just please follow me here. I do ask everyone to download this because I think this is key. I don't want. I don't want someone else to go through this and try to figure it out. Um, I want someone to build upon my my analysis or whatever. Um, and again, you know, if someone deletes this video, someone else has it and can post it. So please do so. All right. So this is the Tesla self-starting alternating motor. As discussed before, on the left side is going to be your alternator, and on the right is going to be your induction motor. Now, in order for these two to work, the drum armature, which is your rotor, but from the for the discussion of this video we're going to call it the drum armature as Nikola Tesla stated um, is in the alternator <clears throat> it's connected by these things called contact rings not a commutator uh, so don't get that mistaken so the drum armature of the alternator is then connected over to the right here to the external coils on the ring of the induction motor it's dual circuitry so please understand that you know although it's two engines it's really one engine uh, it's really one motor the way that it's set up in, in this design. The black lines are going to be your ground to the earth because Nikola Tesla explained that uh, if you wanted to get this started, you could plug it into the ground. You could also use a car battery. You could use any other thing to get this started. Uh, no, no questions asked. But he was stating from a bare minimum, that's all you had to do. <clears throat> so let's get into this discussion and let's learn a little bit more about the induction motor. Here we have the induction motor. <clears throat> this diagram has been modified from the alternating motor diagram, which is figure nine in most of the news articles that you will read. The difference here is that I removed the circuitry between, between the drum armature and the external housing, and I also removed the contact rings. You'll get a better uh, idea of that when we get to the induction mo uh, to the alternating motor, but for this purposes, this is the, the figure that I, did, I created for the induction motor. So as we see here, now that we added some color to it, we have primary and secondary uh, coils. <clears throat> the primary coils are red, the secondary coils are blue. Uh, they are running asynchronous, uh, but in order to get it in sync, uh, there's a need for a resistor, which I believe are these white circles. Um, doesn't really make sense here, but uh, from what I understand, in Tesla's diagrams is that the resistor is connected actually to the primary circuit in order to uh, reduce the, the length of the, the power or whatnot in order to bring the secondary coil, coil up to create that sonocracy. So that's the left. And just so you know, the left side is the front view, and then the right side is the side view of the diagram. I was confused at the beginning because I thought it was all part of the, the same. It was actually two different rotors or two different armatures and things going on which is not so this is just two different views so you understand now if we look to the right here we have the drum armature the drum armature uh, consists of two coils uh, which is a primary and secondary so there's there's four four coils on there but they're connected in pairs and that's why I have those two lines uh, the red going to the red in the back which you can't see and then the, the top coil that's blue going down to the bottom coil on, on the bottom part there. Here's more details regarding this prime, this induction motor. These are the key names that Nikola Tesla describes when he describes uh, his motors. <clears throat> so we understand that we have the primary and secondary coil. Those are in the red and blue. The actual ring is thin insulated plates of sheet iron. So you understand that. And if you look at my videos, uh, where I actually show a photo of one of them. Uh, it's definitely made of a bunch of thin insulated sheets of uh, iron. 
Uh, I have the question marks there because I'm not sure if these white circles are resistors. It's not explained in Nikola Tesla's news articles. Okay. And then again, the drum armature, I have it pointing to two locations. It's because there's a side view and then there's a front view. Okay. So don't be mistaken there. The key here is that the induction motor is closed loop, meaning that the, the coils that are on the drum armature are closed and they do not connect to the, the, the coils on the external housing of the outside of the motor. Okay, that's key in terms of making this induction motor. It's sort of like a ceiling fan. Nothing really, nothing char uh, touches. It's just the ether that actually creates that magnetic field that creates the spin. Okay. This is actually the alternating motor. This diagram is how it is seen in the newspapers. Uh, it's figure nine. All right, so here we go with a little bit more detail. The positives, uh, the, the primary coils are in red, the secondary coils are in blue. Uh, we have a left side of view and a right side of view, but he shows how it's connected in the middle, right? So with the alternating motor, the drum armature's uh, circuitry needs to be connected to the external housing. And how Tesla does that is by using these things called contact rings, which are these rectangular items that are in the middle. So on the drum armature, the, co the actual copper coils, uh, the ends of them actually go into the drum armature, as you can see in that little rectangular box where the, the wires disappear. And then they pop out on the left side and then actually go to each one of these contact rings. Those contact rings are then connected to the actual external housing where the ring, uh, the, the, the copper wires are connected on the external housing. So here's a little bit more information uh, again on, on what we're talking about here if you're going to read some of Nikola Tesla's news articles. So again, we have the primary and secondary coils, the drum armatures, the same drum, drum armature. We're just seeing a, a front and side view here. But the key, the key really here is that you have the, the contact rings which connect the, the drum armature and the external housing. So four copper wire ends from the armature are connected to four copper wire ends from the ring via four contact rings, creating two independent circuits. Sounds confusing, but again, it's, it's two independent circuits that are, are working here in order to run the machine. So what does this all mean? What the induction motor mean and the alternating motor mean is that it could it could run its it could run together as one unit uh, based on uh, a simple connection of the primary and secondary uh, circuits from both uh, motors. So this is again uh, the key here. This is in one of the diagrams that Nikola Tesla showed in one of his news articles. But let's take it one step further. So there you go. What we're seeing here is my, uh, my diagrams for the induction motor and the alternating motor with the primary and secondary circuits. And then I'm showing how you would connect the primary circuits of the alternating motor to the primary circuit of the induction motor. And then also the, primary, uh, the secondary circuit of the alternating motor to the secondary circuits of the induction motor. And by doing this, you create one unit, you create one engine, and this engine will run it, run itself. It's not run by fan belts or anything of that nature like we see in many of these stupid Tesla videos. It's only connected within the circuitry and, and needs the free spin on, 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 on it in order to, for it to work the way that it does. And then as, as you see, the black lines are your ground, or that would be the power source in order to get the actual induction motor and alternating genera generator to run. Tesla stated you can plug it in the ground. It's an open circuit, and then it becomes a closed dual circuit system once uh, it reaches a certain power that you can, can disconnect it from the ground. Um, also, you can use a car battery or you could use anything else for that matter to start this engine. Uh, but once it re reaches its, uh, its normal speed and with the resistors creating uh, a balance between the primary and secondary co coils, once the engine becomes in sync with each other, it will produce enough energy to run perpetually. Now the key here is once you get this thing running perpetually, 
the only time you would need a belt is you would need a belt hooked up to the induction motor which would then run another alternating motor that would create electricity or another or you can run a belt to a DC motor to run something right now in order to run this you need these two engines in order to these two motors to create the free energy you need then you have a belt connected to the induction motor to another alternating motor in order for it to work so hypothetically you need these two to run for free perpetually and then you would need a third motor in order to actually uh, create any energy that can uh, work something you know you know create something that you know create energy that you need to use functionally elsewhere um, so I hope you guys uh, I hope I've kind of lit in some light bulbs out there and uh, inspired you to take another look at Tesla's uh, free energy machine um, I think there's enough videos out there to discourage everyone but I think this uh, I think this will help excite interest into trying to build this uh, it makes pretty much sense and, and for me what I don't understand is that uh, for think about the first 50 years the Westinghouse and Thomas Edison and all these electric companies had to have thousands of these things. Well, where the hell are they now? I can't. I can't believe that they're all scrapped. Um, but hey, it, it it makes all worth more interest to actually go to garage sales and see if somebody somebody has one of these things. But anyhow, you could build it yourself. Nikola Tesla stated it in his uh, video. Uh, I mean, in his video, he's not alive. Uh, in his newspaper articles, that anyone can do this, anyone can build it because it's that simple. So anyhow, I thank you all. This is Fly Fisher, signing off.